Do you guys realize how tempted it was? Like how tempting it was to just try to just just open up open up Elden Ring and just put Elden Ring as just just put, like open it and then play Elden Ring. You guys you, they were talking. They were talking. You guys were talking about it. I was like, what if I what if I do that? What if I just listen to chat and just open up Elden Ring instead of drawing? Instead of drawing. Hello. Hello everybody. <laughs> Hello, Shuggle. Hello, Dev. Hello, Commissar. Meow Mix. Hello. Hello, Caboose. There's still time. I'm trying to figure out why Arcus is here. Hello, Arcus. Ada, Ada. Don't forget the iconic Ranny stink lines. Yes, the ran the Ranny stink lines. Thank you, Buddha, for the tier one sub. Thank you, thank you. And Shuggle, thank you. <laughs> Here's to another successful M-O-N-F-T-H. Yeah! Thank you, Shuggle, for the prime sub. Thank you, thank you. Three again. Time to work back to my 40. Poor caboose. I know, I was tempted. I'm trying to figure out why you guys like me playing um, Elden Ring. I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> I thought I thought you guys would be like, Oh, thank God she's not playing Elden Ring. Oh, God. We've been humoring her. We've been humoring her, but we're glad. We're glad it's not Elden Ring. <laughs> it's really addicting. Um, Armored Core was like that too, though. Like, I struggled a lot with Armored Core in the beginning. But I've, uh, I've, uh... Yeah, it got a little addicting, and then it got frustrating. I think that's why people play Dark Souls, though. I think I'm starting to get why... Why people play Dark Souls. It's because it's, like, um... It's almost like an alcoholic, you know? Like, you kind of need that. My microphone keeps not working for... I think I need to update some stuff here or something. There we go. That's better. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta fix some stuff on my computer one of these days. I don't struggle. I just struggle. Armored Core 2 was fun. Armored Core 2 was fun. It was fun. <laughs> But yeah, no, we're gonna do some art. Unless you really want me to play Elden Ring. But that day, but that day is not today. If you guys really want me to play Elden Ring, I don't know, maybe. I feel like it would be funny to put up a poll. You did oil change and rebalance tire on the PC. The thing is, is like after I moved it, it's been acting funny. Um, not like in like a it's gonna break way, but just in a, a minor inconveniences sort of way. Like it like it's confused. Like I moved its home and now it's confused. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Well, I gotta move something. <laughs> like it forgets. Like sometimes it's fine, and then sometimes it forgets which is my main monitor. And then like it it goodbye. It keeps forgetting. Like it's not picking my my main mic for stuff even though my my big mic is my main mic it's my default mic but it keeps forgetting that so i really don't know what what's going on with that i don't i don't know all right all right hold on <laughs> maybe things are unplugging i don't think so the monitor thing's not crazy weird because I do unplug and replug in my pen display. But it's it's it wasn't doing this before when I was plugging in and unplugging my pen display. <laughs> there we go, that's better. Um so I don't know. Cause it doesn't always do it. So I, I honestly have no idea. So I don't know, but how lewd. So I really don't know what the deal is. For funnies, okay guys, I'm just going to do a silly little funny. Feel free to disregard the silly little funny, but now I'm curious. Hold on. All right, there. <laughs> I'm just curious. 
I'm just curious, guys. There's a poll. I'm curious. The black magic boxes that sit upon our desk. Are... I know, they truly are sorcery. Truly! I put all that glowy stuff in it, and then I had to turn it away where I can't even see the glowy stuff, so I spent that money on glowy stuff, and now I don't even see it. I did a silly little poll at the top of the chat. <laughs> I didn't, I don't know. My treadmill lube is missing. That's dirty. Why can you not vote? Is it broken? All right. Oh my God, it's been so long. It's been so long. See, normally what happens is like, I think like most people, your motivation to do things ebbs and flows, right? So I just finished, I finished Commissar's Commission like a week ago-ish, I think it was. So like my, normally when I finish a commission, like I take a break from drawing for like a week. Just because like, normally like a convention's a little bit of a grind, like I get a little hyper-focused. So like, you know, it's kind of just to prevent burnout. So that was kind of what's been going on. That's why I've been playing so much Elden Ring because I'm taking my break. But. Oh god, it's tied. Guys, it's tied! Someone has to break this tie. We cannot have a tie. I have to look up reference pictures of Ronnie in the meantime. Give me a second. All right. I voted. Sorry, 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 sorry. Did you tie it? Oh my god! I always said something. You guys are gonna tie it anyway. You guys are gonna tie it anyway. There's so many lewd Ronnie drawings. Why? It's all AI art too. That's terrible. Triclops, that's true. Let me call them men slash women. Oh yeah, I forgot her extra face. Do I want to draw her extra face? Do I want to? I was also struggling if I wanted to add her cape or not. I think she's kind of cute just like this, but honestly this arm drives me nuts and if I could just cover that up, that would be great. Actually, I'm just going to add some of her hair. So I don't have to have this connection here. Like this can just go. <laughs> that can just go. We can just get rid of that. Extra face is required. Okay. I don't understand the extra face. What is the extra... Dev, you're the lore guy. What What is the deal with... Do you know what the deal is with the extra face? Why she got two faces? Why the bitch got two faces? Jesus. There. Beep. Now watch. Watch this. Watch the magic of art here. Be. Extra faces because the developer screwed up and it's ghosting. Yes. I actually hate you guys. There's an explanation, but my guess is her spirit is grafted into the doll and she can remote control it. Oh, so like the Ronnie doll is just a remote control? I'm also on the fence about her hat. But if I feel like if I remove too much of her stuff, then it's not Ronnie anymore. You know what I mean? Ronnie dolls her armored core. Like, I don't know. Her hat feels like it's too high on her head here. I feel like this is too, like, I don't know. I'm looking at like official art. I'm trying to figure out the the, the feckin' hat. The feckin' hat. It's so big. So big. You guys! You voted to make it even! Okay, I guess we'll just stay with art then. Then again, one of her companions was trying to create a new doll for her to reside in, but was modifying it to trap her in it so he could have her. Was it Blythe? Damn, this is some lore. This is lore I don't know. Oh! 
Hi, is this the Elden Ring stream? Oh my god. Now do I listen to the poll? <laughs> Freaking sniper! Oh my god. What do I do now? I made a grave error. Do I listen to chat? You'll see when you get there. I feel like I gotta bring this hat down. Now do I listen to chat? That's a good question. I will say, um, my solo Elden Ring streams have been on the on the on the worser performing side. The worser they're not the worst streams, but they're not the they're the worser. You know what I mean? It's a pretty even split. I can't do what I like because I want to do both. That's why I put it up to a poll. <laughs> I love it when they put things up to a poll and people are like, just do what you want. I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> that's why I'm making you guys make the decision. I don't know. All right, that's right. Curves are out. Oh, I'm already already. We might as well leave it. Otherwise, we're going to have to have a setup. Well, thank you guys for letting me know, though. I appreciate that you want to see me play Elden Ring, but we won't be playing it. <laughs> what do you want? It's not that simple. It's not that simple. <laughs> Orc for an hour and then ring more elders. I guess I could do that. I couldn't ring. I couldn't ring elders for very long though. She's got some texture on her hat. Screw the result and play Manor Lord. Hi Bleach. All right, bringing your hat down maybe feel a little bit better, but it still feels like way too massive. So let me make it look bigger and maybe I'll even it out. I think it's because she doesn't have her cloak on. I think the cloak is making it, cause like the cloak kind of balances out her thing, cause it's big and hairy. But I don't know how I could apply. I don't know how I could apply cloak in this without like hiding a bunch of stuff. Oh yeah, I saw that. I didn't see. I didn't watch the video, but I saw like people were linking the the historian watching playing Manor Lords. Did he like it? What if I put the cloak like, like it's her hair, right? Hair first, and then the cloak, and then it comes up behind her just to puff her up a little bit, and then it'll balance it out. Cause right now the big hat isn't balanced. It's driving me nuts. He kind of liked it. Oh, so he didn't like, it wasn't like a big like, it was like a kind of like, like it's all right. Recovering because the hair is gonna be. Was that it was it was okay. Let's see. Let's see. So this cloak. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll bring the cloak down here. We'll leave this. We'll leave this arm uncloaked. He didn't hate it, but he pointed out a few inaccuracies that needed. To be there to be a better game. Oh, really? What? I, what? Where are they? Twat, where are they? <laughs> Why can't I be normal? <laughs> I'm making tea. Wah. I just have water. I was going to make something to drink because one of the things, I don't know if people, other people do this, but I kind of have like quote unquote rituals that help me get into like the mode to do stuff. And art like is a big ritual type activity for me. And one of those things is like having a tasty drink. Now I've been kind of trying to break that ritual, um, mostly because I, um, I don't always have like access to tasty drink, right? Or like I drink too many tasty drinks while I art. So like I get fat. Um, <laughs> So like I just been trying to drink water, which has been fine because I need I need a drink. But I do miss tasty drink, you know what I mean? Guy jousted at Egg and Court. He knows it's stuff. Splark, I keep to see how things are going. Hope you're doing well, V, as well as sending you hugs and funny shoulder bugs. Hi, Razor. I'm doing good. 
Chad voted for me to play Elden Ring, so we're drawing Elden Ring. We are playing Elden Ring tomorrow, though. So you guys will get to see Elden Ring tomorrow. Maybe if I decide to swap gears at some point tonight. I don't know if I will, because that's like, who doggies out of commitment? Um, <laughs> you know, swapping gears in the middle of a stream. What was the poll result? It was Elden Ring. It was to play Elden Ring. <laughs> um, but if I do swap, it'll probably be like more chill, grindy level kind of stuff and nothing crazy. Hello, disregarded. To be fair, I wasn't, I didn't say I would listen to chat. I just said I was curious to see what you guys thought. To be completely fair. I didn't promise I'd listen. I just said. Right, that's her hair. All right, and then I got the big thing. Yeah, I definitely think she, like, needs to have her cloak if she's going to have the hat. I think the cloak, or the hat without the cloak is, like, way too much. George R. I don't think George R. R. Martin wrote Ronnie. He just named people. I don't think he did any of the writing. I think you're just memeing me. I think you're bullshitting me, and I think this is like the ninth time you've done it, and I think I've fallen for it every single time, to be completely honest with you. How much involvement did George R. R. Martin? I'm Googling it. He wrote the backstory for the game, nothing more. In an interview, he talks about how they tasked him to write a sort of setting, 5,000 years before the main event of the game. This included the main demigods we interact with, but before they were corrupted. So things like rant- <laughs> Jesus! Zellerman, thank you um, for the bits. That was the most terrified I have ever been from a fart in my entire life. You get you get the prize of the scariest fart known to mankind. Holy shit. That gave me a full <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the follow element. <laughs> Welcome to your knee <sighs> Oh hasn't had Taco Bells for three day farts, so no I have not. Um anyway. Oh my gosh. All right. They include demigods we interact with, but before they're corrupted. So things like Radon, Rikard, and Ronnie being siblings was written by George R.R. R. Martin. Queen Merica's arrival in the lands between, Godfrey's conquest, Godfrey and the Tarnished, ejection from the lands between, Radigan leaving Rinala to become America's consort, those sorts of far in the past lore pieces up until the shattering, which was also George R.R. R. Martin, where George R.R. R. Martin's contributions end. Had no involvement with the current events of the story we experienced in the lands between. That was Miyazaki and his team. Okay, so he wrote like the big in the beginning. America's concert. So he did nothing then. Someone's like, so he did nothing. Man, people don't know how to world build. They don't know how to world build. That's okay, I don't either. <laughs> Alright, we got some fluff. And they're gonna have her fluffy hair. Like, her hair in the, in the game art is scraggly, but I want her to have soft fluffy hair. Alright, so the, I, think, I think we need to add more bulk, though. I think there needs bulk. Ronnie must be bulky. If you're good friends with Mr. Martin, you can call him George R.R. R. It's true. It needs to be bulky to make up for a hat. Duck. Big duck hours. So yeah, that's in interesting. Try not to burp directly into the mic. 
And we know Ronnie loves her mommy, so that's good. She's a good daughter, I guess. What color protein shake does Ronnie drink? What color protein shakes are there? Aren't they all just kind of brown? They're all just kind of brown, aren't they? All right, so we're going to have this come like this way. Moon white, duh. No, 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 she's a dark moon, isn't she? So it would be like... She'd probably get one of those like galaxy smoothies that like the with the boba the boba pearls in it or something weird like that. Probably. Dark moon purple. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm the sprinkles, yeah. Oh, okay, hold on. I have to hold on, give me a second. Okay, I'm back. I got like really stuffy all of a sudden. Why does my water suddenly taste weird? What? So like I had to mute because I had a bunch of snot. <laughs> in my sinuses and I had to remove it from the sinuses and I didn't want to subject you guys to that horrific sound and now I did that and my sinuses are fine but now my water tastes funny and I'm a little concerned I'm kind of worried <laughs> it tastes very chemically all of a sudden All right, I think, so I don't think I'm gonna do line art. Got that fluoride sinus strip, something. I, I've been fine all day. It's just until I came into my office. I don't know what's going on. Corbo water, let's go. So I think I'm gonna, we're gonna skip the line art on this one. I think we're just gonna sit on the sketch and paint over the sketch. All right. And we're, that's that's how we're gonna roll with this one. Me thinks. Okay, I did not want to erase that thingy. Ah, I feel the need to flop now. Me will go flop on floor or bed. All right, good luck with your flop. What flavor is the water for the rest of chat? Been purging fungi all day. Oh my god. All right, so basically what we're gonna do with a hint of chewing tobacco that sounds really gross all right we're gonna mer we're gonna merge this down so we get and then we're gonna make the paper a darker gray like so and we're gonna take that light blue color and we're gonna kind of do like an underpainting with with ranny here We're gonna start like a gray blue color. And we're gonna do soft painting brush. All right, we're just gonna do some underpainting. We're gonna try some underpainting for funsies and just see how that goes. So we're just gonna kind of scribbly. Um, what if people don't know what underpainting is, I can explain. Um, basically what happens is this is more of a, um, digital artists use it too, obviously. Um, but this is more of a traditional art technique. And basically what happens is you underpaint and your underpaint can have like a plan or it cannot. It's up to you. It really doesn't matter either way. Um, but what happens is because you paint everything kind of all the same underneath, that sometimes when you're painting on top of it, those colors will kind of come through and that will tie the whole piece in together. Please help me. Yeah. Um, underpainting is not my most favorited technique um, because when I was doing more traditional art, I would desperately try to just get rid of the underpainting so you couldn't see it, which kind of rendered the underpainting pretty much like useless. Um, and in digital art, there's like different ways to tie a painting together. Like 
and I'd almost say they're like I kind of argue they're easier um, but I don't know it's still a, it's still a, a fun technique to use because you can kind of get crazy for a little bit some more blues you use it you could use it to hint at shadows um you can it, like i said there's different techniques some people that have a more controlled uh aspect of their underpainting like that the the point of underpainting is not necessarily to add like colors where they need to be it's just to add colors if that makes sense now i'm gonna blend a lot of this in together not like that because i'm still gonna be painting up on top of this so like shadows and stuff um But this will, like, when you do, like, a painting, like, when I do a digital painting, like, uh, with robos that I did, if I would turn off all the layers, the, you could see through them. Like, if I turned off the background layer, you would be able to see through the layers like that because the background layer was still coming through and it was affecting the colors on top of it, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to let the like icy blue white colors be the ones that affect my painting instead of it being like the dark gray. But also like having them be different blotches kind of increases the interest in it too. Makes it look a little bit more natural in a way. The Yeah, the underpaint will... So um, I will keep the underpaint its own layer because um i when i do paintings um what i'm gonna do is i'm going to just rough and you'll see that in a minute once i'm done with this i'm gonna rough in the colors and then i'm going to do sh lights i'm gonna do shadows and highlights on a multiply and um add layers um and i don't want to mix up that with the with the this because it'll change the way the colors look do a pink swish So if I if I left this on if I painted over this on the same layer, these colors would start mixing in with the colors I'm using. And I don't want them to mix. I just want them to kind of pull through on their own. And you will see in a minute when I start painting. So I'm gonna just fill in like her dress, for example, which it looks like a gray light blue color. So I'm not gonna go like super hard in on it but I'm just going to block it in. And then you'll kind of like, you know, so like, obviously like I'm not doing like a perfect job. I'm not like hitting it all the way to the lines, right? I'm just kind of scribbling it in. And some of the places are already that color and some places they're not. So, you know, like, like here, right here in this spot, it's going to be a little thinner, right? And it's okay. Like I don't have to be super duper precise with it. It's more of like a loosey-goosey technique, I guess. Does that make sense? Because it might look like I'm hitting every single spot, but I'm not. See, and I'll show you because when I turn the under, and this is why I leave the underpainting on a separate layer, is because if I turn the underpainting off, look, if I turn this off and then turn the underpainting off, Look how all these light spots that you can see through it. But if I turn the underpainting back on, they fill in, but the underpainting's affecting the actual paintings that way. I can talk about color theory. I'm not great with color theory though. I'm still working on it. All right, so then her jet, her cloak's like a dark gray color. I'm gonna try to go more mid saturation though. Could talk about color. It's a little too dark for my taste. There you go. Color theory. Aha. Color theory is you spin the wheel and then pick that color, right? No. So, like, oh, but I don't like how close that is. Hold on a minute. There you go. I'm drawing along, but that's got color tempo. I know those feels. I know those. I'm not happy with this color. 
color theory is something I'm still, um, I don't know, color theory is one of those ones I feel like people, you're kind of always going to be learning. It's not easy. It's very like, it can be easy if you just scratch the surface, but like if you really like, if you sit down one day and you're like, I want to learn color theory and you start doing like actual research about color theory, it is way way more complicated it like there's so much there's so much out there to learn like just just on color theory oh i didn't erase that line that's okay the csp buttons are so overwhelming to a noob um they're a lot like photoshop i don't know if you're used to using photoshop i don't use like 99 percent of the buttons though like on a regular basis i think i use maybe three Her hair is very blue. But yeah, we're just, it's all very loosey-goosey at this point, which I'm okay with. All right, so like a lighter blue color for her hat. So we'll color in her hat. And like at this point, you know, if I wanted to, I could start, you know, kind of using the underpainting to sculpt in shadows. I'm not going to do that yet because I'm going to use the multiply tool and stuff, but like some people would use this as an opportunity to start that. Um, I don't like doing that with a soft brush and that is honestly just a personal preference more than anything. I really like blend on CSP. I've learned it well. Hello, Mimo. Nope, all my art was not digital. Ah, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mimo. Yeah, it's a big leap to go from traditional to uh to digital, I think. But yeah, so basically instead of having like this gray paper act as my underpainting, I'm I'm taking control. I really am digging this music too. I just typed in like Elden Ring playlist. So this isn't like, there's some Elden Ring music on here, but it's more of the vibe and less of the actual like Elden Ring music. How do you keep the colors and the lines even? Like my line art? So what I use for my line art, well, my sketch um, is I use a, Okay, you can see it. I use a mechanical pencil on CSP, um, and then I just keep the brush density at uh, 100, so it just is always... Um, you have to mess with the settings because some brushes, like the opacity will change with pen pressure, and I normally turn that off. Thank you, Malmix. Ronnie is super easy color palette because she is monochromatic, which means she's basically one color. She's different shades of one color, which is blue. <laughs> so Ronnie is a super easy color palette, but I think that's part of the reason also why she was so um, popular was because she was like simple. All right, her hair is like almost the same color, but like darker and... Yeah. She's so misty. Yeah. I think that's why she's so popular, though. I mean, besides, like, her voice acting is really good, too. But I think the fact that she's so monochromatic kind of makes her stand out from everybody else in the game. Although, like, I notice there's a lot of, like, um, really simple color palettes. Like, well, so like a good one is Radigan. Is it Radigan? I think it's Radigan. Oh no, Radigan, Elden Ring. I don't know if they actually have pictures of Radigan. Okay, it's just him. So like Radigan's an interesting one because um oh god, what do you call it um. Hold on. Because his color palette, I don't remember what the actual image is. 
or not the actual image, what the actual name is. Um, I think it's just called a neutral palette. But so basically, like, so Ronnie is monochromatic, right? She's just different shades of blue. But like Radigan, for example, is really nice because, um, just like I'm just pulling up pictures of him from the game. Is he is all neutrals, right? Like his tones of gray, tones of like brown, dark gray. But then his hair is red, right? Which really pops. So it draws your eyes. Except for, except for the red in his hair is muted. So it's not as saturated as it could be. And that makes the gold from the symbols in his chest and the glowing on his weapon really, really pop. Which makes him not only look like really belligerent but it it like it uh it has like a very intense feeling because it stands out so far from the neutral color palette but it's not so out of place because he's still got that red hair so that radigan has a really good color palette too um the characters designs on a lot of these guys from elden ring are really good Radican's a himbo, yes. Marika's got boobies. That's kind of her deal. She got damn boobies. I bet she gives warm hugs, Marika. The Elden Beast is goo. But yeah. Fia, yeah, Fia is the hugger. Yeah, I think that's why part of the reason why Ronnie got so popular is because she's more of like a simple. She stood out. Her design stands out a lot from the rest of the the game characters. Like M Marinara, like she's got a pretty. Marinara has a complementary color palette because her hair is like that red pinky color, but she has a green cloak. Is Big Hat Logan cute? A cute. What's who's Big Hat Logan? Big Hat Logan. I'm Googling it. Oh my god. Big Hat Logan is a cute witch. Yes. There's a lot of big hatted people in this game. Logan is a douche. I haven't run into him. Literal waifu. Literal waifu material. So yeah. So we have our, our base here. I should probably pull in like all right, so here's a good example of when you're working with a monochrome color palette. Monochrome color palette, right? So, like, she's sitting on a bench. Now, I don't really want the bench to be blue, right? Because wood is not necessarily blue, right? So, an easy thing to do, and this is my tip of the day, um, find, like, the color you want. So, like, obviously, like, wood would be, like, a brown color, right? So, I'm going to pull up a brown. Um, I'm going to, you want to, if you're trying to make colors work well together, here's the color theory rant. If you want to make colors work well together that probably normally wouldn't, turn the saturation of the colors down. And what that means is if, so this is a very saturated color, this orange. This is a very saturated orange, right? But this, but then if you turn the saturation of this orange down like this, it's not as bright, right? So then if you add a really bright blue, right? This feels super clashy. This makes your, your pupils constrict. This is very clashy. But if you turn the saturation down, these two, while they're the same hue, their saturations turn out, these two kind of vibe a little better, right? So there's your, ah, I wrote it down the wrong layer. Um, there's your color theory for the day. So basically we want this to be brown, right? Um, so what you can do is I'm going to find a really desaturated brown, almost gray, and I'm going to throw it on and I'm going to use a soft brush. Now, this is a fun thing you can do. I'm going to just kind of brush it on super light because my soft brush has opacity on pressure. So I'm not going to push very hard because then I get some opacity like in this this area right here, right? So then I can color drop that, get rid of this. And now I have a brown that still reads brown, but it's a mix of that brown and the blue. And because it's desaturated, it still works with the piece without being super clashy clashy. Did I fight the other big hatted witch yet? Well, I we got rid of Renala. She's gone. 
also now you have a brown bench that reads brown bench but it doesn't look super painful to look at that is one thing um new artists constantly struggle with is they want to work with really saturated colors and then their color palettes their pieces look insane because they just hit with the hyper saturation and nothing really kind of uh mingles nicely What do I do for her background? Do I do like a moon? Do I do a stars? What do I do? I wanna, I wanna, I've been on like a backlit kick for like a year. I kinda wanna do another backlit. So I'm thinking like a moon, but like a dark moon. What does a dark moon look like? I know there's a dark moon. Stars and a moon? Hold on. Hold on, ring, dark moon. Not great sword, just dark moon. I went to picture. We have Ronnie, Roger, and Albrecht. Secret Hush Hush mini boss. Oh, I see. Oh, wow, that looks cool as fuck. All right, so we're, I think we'll do something like that. So it's it's a portrait. It's portrait, so I can't really get a whole lot of background, but I want some background. So what we'll do is we'll go in the we'll go in the background layer, and we'll do like a dark blue. So I'll just color pick. Um, that's the other thing is color picking from your piece once you get your bases down is a really highly recommended. Um, yeah, so we're going to color pick and I'm just going to put like this is going to be the moon, right? Well, I'm just going to make it all dark, right? We'll make it all dark. And then we'll make it a little bit darker and this will be the moon, right? It'll be subtle. It'll be a subtle background, but that's okay. And then we'll make it a little bit lighter. And then we'll do we'll do some of this. We'll do and we'll do some of the I'm just looking at a picture right now, so I'm just doing a little squiggliness. Okay, maybe we'll bring that up just a little bit. This is why you guys do this is why you should use layers, because now I can bring it up a little bit. Yeah, and then she can be backlit by the dark moon. And then we'll do a little blendy blendy right now just to Little blendy blendy. My personal favorite blender in Clip Studio Paint is the Painterly Blender. It gives so much nice texture. I'm I'm a fan. I would recommend. I love I love texture in pieces though. I like I love texture in artwork. Um, the only ever time I use like the smooth blender is if I'm doing skin. Cause I feel like a lot of texture in skin, unless you're trying to make like an old person, it looks really wonky. Um, but yeah. So you want to use a smooth texture uh, for skin, like for like standard, normal, like soft girl skin. But yeah, otherwise that, my painterly blenders, my, my boy, my boy. All right. So we got like a, we got a thing. I want to save. Give me a second. All right. So now I'm going to go in onto that layer that I added the different colors on and I'm going to start sculpting a little bit. Um, and I think I'm going to start with her hair. So... I'm going to color pick right now. I'm going to pull this. Um, drop the color a little bit. I'm not going to do too much like refining at this stage. This is more or less. I'm, I can't believe I'm just like talking so much during this. This was not my plan for today. But it's okay. I like educating. <laughs> oh yeah, wait. This is supposed to be her hair. Um, I'm not going to do too much for this because I'm going to... <laughs> Ruffles, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the meat hall. I'm being educated. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna do too much sculpting type situations on this, but right now, because I'm gonna go in with the uh, multiply tool in a little bit, and that's when I'll really like hit the shadows and stuff, but this is just more or less giving myself like a frame of reference on where shadows should be. Cause right now we got a lot of sketchy lines, right? So I'm just kind of trying to like make it easier for my brain to to pick up on stuff this is just make it easier for me and Noah nothing else but yeah so basically like when I do like a, a painting quote unquote and not like a line art type drawing like I I take more of a traditional approach to it um, as far as like layering 
actually uh watercolor painted the other day for like the first time in a really long time it was actually really nice and it came out really nice it was just in like a coloring book like one of those like adult adult coloring books so like i didn't draw the art for it or anything i just painted which actually was kind of nice to just like be able to paint without having to think too much it was a very brain off moment which i can appreciate no 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love watercolor painting. I was like my my vibe, my jam back in the day. My jam. So, it was nice to do. All right, so then we're going to do I'm just going to pull like this color and use this for shading here. You know, so like obviously like right here she's got a fold, so I put like a, a shadow below it. Um you need to decide on your light source pretty early, I would say. Now, when you decide on your light source, like, it's not set in stone. You can always change it. Um. Oh, my gosh, that scared me. Now, Mix, thank you for the gift sub. Thank you, thank you. Um, you can always change it. But, like, deciding on it early helps because, you know, you don't have to redo it then. Um, but, so my main light source is going to be the backlighting, but obviously there needs to be a secondary light source or she'd be completely black, right? The, there would be no light to reflect, so you wouldn't be able to see any details. Jesus, jump scare. Become one with the grand. So, 99% of the time, I pick your very uber, super duper basic, like, from the top light source. Because I am... I am a basic bitch. <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's comfy for me. I like it. It works for me. I know how to do it. I should probably practice other ones a bit more, but it's it makes it very easy to know where the where the shadows go. I don't need to think much, you know. So. Um, but yeah, normally when you're doing like a piece of art and you really want to have a lot of shading and rendering and stuff, it's good to consider two light sources. Um, they don't both have to be, I wouldn't recommend them both being equally strong. Normally you have like one like main light source and then you have a secondary light source. Now you can do some crazy things with like two really strong light sources, but I would recommend that for more experienced artists. Um, or... If you want to give it a go, try to find some really good references of something like that. Because that's not normally something you see every day. Head empty, only art thoughts. It's true. Like, what about a lantern and a doorway as light sources? That's fine. But like I said, make sure they're not equal in strength. So you have to decide um, which one is going to be the main light source. So, like, is the lantern close to her? Or is the doorway closer? You know, like, where is more light coming from? So just one has to help the other. Oh, what if I put something... What if I put... I feel like I should put something right here. I don't have a... I don't want to do a lamp. Guys, what's something... Does Ronnie carry anything? It's been a hot minute since I've talked to the Wayman. What is this? My hand. No. Damn. I was hoping she carried something shiny. Man, AI is just ruining Google, goddamn. God damn. Maybe a candlestick? I don't know. No, I was thinking of something for like a light source. So it would have to be glowing or shining or something. I don't know. Well, we'll, can, we'll think about it. We don't have to decide right this second. All right, now I got to find my reference picture again. Hold up. Hold up. Ah, there we go. Mm. 
Okay. Back to what I was doing. All right. There will be an ad in about six minutes. So if anyone's thinking about, you know, needing a potty break or something, I'm going to go, I'm going to go have a potty break and refill my water and maybe find something tasty to drink in about five minutes and stretch our legs. Oh, I wonder if I, do you guys want words with stream? Words on stream? I'll make the book glow. That could be. We haven't done words on stream in like a hot minute. Sure. All right. Words. Do I still have it? I don't think I have it. Hold on. Let me bring it up. I'll get it set up. Hold on. set up commissar is addicted to this he would get ragey when i didn't when i didn't put it up he'd start foaming at the mouth all right application kit no 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 browser source there we go oh there you go All right, so when it's ad time, you guys can play words on stream. How's that sound? Does that make you happy dappy? Does that make you happy dappy cluckers? Are you happy dappy? Word, glintstone gems, maybe. Okay, yeah, yeah, we got options, we got options. All right, so basically, yeah, that's what I want. I got a... My other issue I have when I'm like doing this kind of stuff is I don't get like really, I don't, I need to think bigger with the shadows. Like I, I, I end up always being like, I need little tiny super duper detailed shadows. That's, that's, that's not what I need. I need very big overreaching, overarching shadows. I need them to be big shadows. Macro, think macro, not micro. I don't think Randy uses a wit, uh, a wand. Shadows do not avail you. Oh, she's got the little, she's got the, like, the lace on her hat, too. She's got a wrinkly hat, guys. It's wrinkly. This bitch be wrinkly. She has a stick. She's a snow witch. Trying to just look at her hat because she's got like wrinkles on her hat. Okay, and then this needs to be darker blue. Oh man, that's way too close to her hair. Hold on a minute. Nope, still too close. There you go, that's a little better. Still not good. <laughs> there you go. All right, so then after our little break, I will come back and we'll start like using the, we'll start doing some shading and I can talk to you guys about the multiply. The multiply tool. Yes. <laughs> I didn't do any of her skin. That's okay. We'll use that. We'll save that for the multiply tool. Like I said, this is more or less just to get like a feel for everything. A vibe, if you will. We're vibing, we're vibing. Look like a tear on her big hat, very symbolic of her royalty. Yes, it is. Like I said, they, Ronnie specifically, but they did a good job on a lot of the character designs. All right, so yeah, we're just kind of adding some shadows in on the fluff here. I have to erase this line here because it's, it's messing me up. And then... Add some shadows here, back here, because obviously your head is blocking stuff. His claim to it, it's stuck in a sewer somewhere until you pick it up, and it's meant to be a gift, so it's hers to give. Oh.
Silly Suna. All right, so yeah, here, let's zoom out. Let's zoom out and take a look at Ranny here. Yeah, see, so like we went from like sketch to half rendered to sketch. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take a tiny break here. I'm gonna run an ad. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and get a snack and uh, yeah. God, I can't believe it's already been an hour. Damn. She wields it to bash my skull. Jesus. All right, so I'll put words up for you guys so you don't suffer. Uh, and I will be back in a few minutes, so hold tight.
I have returned. I was, I'm, I have half a pancake and a stick of cheese. Why is the first word anal? Dev? Is there something you would like to talk about? Can we have a conversation? <coughs> I don't like the beam about putting my fan in my window. I don't know if it's hotter or, or not. Outside. Give me a sec. I'm going to put my fan in my window. This is my problem with summer is I overheat. Ah, oh, okay, I'll let you guys do one more while I eat my cheese stick. First thing I saw was anal, yeah? Yeah? Do we, should we explore that a little bit more? Uh, uh. Nope. Uh. Tire! Oh, Buddha got that one. Um. Wire! Oh no, Commissar got it. Fuck. Um. Um. Right. Oh, damn it. Um. Uh. Um. Eat? No. Uh. Water? Nope. What? Nope, not water. Um. Right, really? Mm. Twi- 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 tree try t- ah oh! um um twitter writ- no someone already said writ white right right wrath wait what are those what are those what is like a ghost what is it with ghost? Like a ra oh wraith? Am I thinking wraith? That's not right. I'm just shouting out words to mess you guys up. Oh yeah, white. You're right. You're right. Oh come on, guys! You only need three more. You got this. Wiener. Word is no longer safe. Weird? That's not a word. That's not a word. Not a word. It is not a word. All right, you guys don't get to play another round. You can play next next ad. I wish I could pause this. I can only exit. No, damn it! Stop it! Don't type anything. Hold on. Sorry. Nope. Bye. Sorry. Dev! Right. I like how Buddha's like, we have all the letters for the C word, and Dev's like, cunt. He just does not care. Alright, I'm gonna make myself a little dwinky poo. My little, I ate my cheesy stick. I'm making my little dwinky poo. I had my pancake. I'm like a... An actual five-year-old. I found out that I probably don't get enough protein in my... We talked about this. I don't get enough protein in my diet, right? And that's why I'm hungry all the time. I was talking to a bunch of other people about it. And they're like more crazy health nut people. And they're like, what did they say? You need like 40 grams of protein or something? I don't, maybe that was wrong. That, that sounds like a lot. Hold on. How many program? How many grams of protein should you eat in a day? Oh no, I don't want the Google AI overview. 10 to 20, 10 to 35% of your calories should come from protein. So if you need 2,000 calories- Bricks! God! Commissary brick. Actual. 
All right. Recent research is just aiming for more. For example, one to three grams and 1.8 grams a kilo per kilogram for body weight. So approximately 88 grams to 122 grams for a weighman of protein. So 105 grams to 145 grams for men may be optimal for health. Especially when it comes to warding off age-related muscle loss. It's like a stupid amount. It's like a stupid amount. So, like, apparently, like, I just don't get enough protein. Like, and I thought I was, like, yeah, right? Wow. Like, I, it's like, I, I thought, like, oh, you know, I, like, I'm, I'm probably close. But I'm, like, I maybe get, like, six grams of protein a day. Maybe. Rice, beans, more chicken. I do eat a lot. Well, no, because, like. I normally eat carbs in the morning and then carbs for lunch and then like I'll have like a meat heavy meal for dinner. Like there's some fruit and vegetables tossed in there too, but. So like I really, I don't know, maybe I do need that protein powder. Just drink two eggs a day. Maybe I need that protein powder more than I thought I needed that protein powder. Is that that peanut butter powder? The BCAA? Wait, how much protein is in an egg? Because I actually love eggs. Six grams. Okay, so if I need 106 grams of protein divided by six... But I probably need like 135 because I've been weightlifting at the gym. So let's just assume I need 135 grams divided by 6. Can I use my calculator? 135 divided by 6. 135 divided by 6. One. What is going on? 135 divided by. Why is it? My calculator's not working. <laughs> 135. Divided. What is going on with this calculator app? 135 divided by 6. Thank you. Jesus. I need 22 eggs a day. Protein powder makes people stink. It's not just protein. It's the right assortment of amino acids for your body to process. It's very important you build up. Or you'll just shit out extra protein since your body can't process. I do not want to shit out the protein. Please, I beg. Guys, I'm going to eat 22 eggs a day. That's going to be my dono goal stuff. It's just every time we hit a dono goal, I'm going to eat an egg. All right, we're going to do some Rani drawing. It's nice knowing you then. Gaston! I will be the next Gaston for real, for real. One of the dono girls should be like me in Gaston costume. Just make, like, put it on Skeb, make some Japanese artists draw that. <laughs> That's a lot of cholesterol. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right, we're going to do a multiply layer on this. This is my line art. We're going to make this quieter a little bit. World record weightlifter V. Yeah. What if it's her face? All right, so we're going to do multiply layer. So when I start my multiply layers, um, I I start them at like 100% opacity. I will turn it down like once I get pretty much done with it to like where I'm happy about it. Oh, I thought you would cosplay. Cos no, nah, I just wear his outfit. All right, so then um, normally what I do when I'm starting out, when you are doing lights and shadows, standard procedure, again, is shadows are cool toned. So, like, blues, greens, purples. Highlights are warm-toned. Oranges, yellows, reds, right? Now, once you get a little bit of a handle on that, you can flip-flop them to get cool effects, but those are, like, standard procedure. Like, you won't go wrong with that, right? Is opacity invisible or seen? It's either... it's it's Opacity is the adjustment of if it is invisible or if it is seen. If something's opaque, it is visible. 
BCAA is mostly snake oil. If you're consuming protein from good sources, you're getting what you need. They're useful if you're cutting and need to maintain muscle while slashing calories, otherwise waste. What is BCAA? BCAA. Is it just protein powder? Hundred percent opacity. Can I see it? Yes. Is it like special protein powder? Branch chain amino acids. Oh. Five hundred forty grams per container. Well, this one looks scary. This looks like this looks like gamer subs. I don't okay, so like I'm weird, right? I'm this weird person. I don't like taking um like I don't even like taking medicine, right? I don't like taking ibuprofen and stuff. So like um for me to like take like powdered stuff, it it's 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 hard. Um I will say I've been taking um what's it called? Collagen? Is it collagen? I think it's collagen. Is it collagen? I think I've been taking collagen powder. Um, and I've been taking ones that help with immunity stuff. My doctor recommended it. Oh, because there's a certain collagen that can help with your gut, which increases your immunity, biome, probiotic crap. I don't know. Doctor recommended it. But like I don't I don't like taking like extra powdery stuff. Like I will eat a steak, right? But like now I'm not saying I won't do it, but it's like something I seriously have to look into. It freaks me out. It freaks me out. I don't know why it makes no I mean I know why but like it's and it's nothing to do with like you know it, I don't know I just I just don't like taking stuff is really what it comes down to all right I'm gonna take I'm gonna do some purple just to toss it up a little bit because it's better to just eat yeah like but like I also I don't know I feel like I to get that much protein I'd have to be constantly eating bacon and eggs in the morning let's go I really would love to be one of those people like I was reading that like the ideal like meal situation is like big breakfast smaller lunch smallest dinner like that would be ideal but there's no way in fuck I am going to be able to have the energy to make a big breakfast in the morning, let alone stomach it. I do not want straight caffeine powder. No, that sounds terrible. In order to gain weight, I have 4,000 calories or more a day. That was painful. Bah. My balls have gravana. All right, so I have my multiply layer on. Um... I used to remember why it was called a multiply layer. I can't remember anymore. There, there's like math and stuff involved with the multiply layer. So I picked a purple because I just like I want to stick with the monochrome, but I want to make it a little bit more interesting than just like blue, 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 blue. One cup of chopped chicken breast is forty-three grams of protein. Oh, that's not bad. So when I do the multiply, because right now we're at 100%, so I'm just kind of like running over it and seeing if I like the way it looks. I don't really like the way it looks. So I'm just going to pull it a little bit darker maybe. So that's more of a gray color. Don't like that either. That's too saturated. I might not go with the purple. No, okay, that's good. Okay. I like that. So you bulk cook the bacon and throw it in your eggs. Would that be greasy? I love eggs though. Like I can, I can unironically eat lots of eggs. Like unironically, I love eggs. I love egg, much like people love lamp. All right. So basically, what I do with the multiply tool is I'm gonna use the lasso tool, the free lasso, and I'm just gonna zoop. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a perfect zoop. Zoop and fill, boom. Zoop and fill. We got shadows, you know. Shoop and fill. And I'm going to use my guides. And I don't have to follow them exactly. Because as you go, you're going to realize there's spots that don't need shadow. Or there's spots that need more shadow. So you boop. Right? Shoop. 
you know, so obviously like, I know there's a backlight and I know there's light coming from top. So her hand's probably going to be more in shadow, right? Because her hat's blocking it. You need nutrient dense stuff and your stomach can't handle all of it. And you need to be active enough. Know your metabolism to burn digestive nutrients, calories properly. It's literally a weird juggling act that Hollywood and Tristan's make six figures off to keep on top for, for people. Yeah. The best breakfast is a couple bacon, two eggs, and a biscuit. That sounds nice. I would love to do egg and rice, dude. I'm so simple. I don't, you know, I realize I don't really like big complicated things. Like, I like eating them. I just don't like cooking them. All right, so I'm just going to shadow her eyes here. Like, I'm happy with, like, a cup of soup <laughs> and some lettuce. Now I'm mad I don't have bacon. I miss what your goals are. I just don't want to be hungry anymore. Like, I'm always hungry. It's the worst. All right, so I know there has to be a shadow here. Yep. I know there's going to be shadow. Okay, so, like, these are more shadowed because they're under her hat. And like I said, I keep my, and this is just a personal preference thing, like you can you can do it however you wanna do it, if you are arting, if you're an arty farty, if you're a drawer. Um, I just keep them at 100% until I get more done with it, because um, I can see them easier, and I know I put stuff there. That's literally the only reason. Um, I'll probably, normally what I end up doing is about like 40 to 50% opacity on the first pass of shadows. And then it kind of goes, I go, I go by the vibe then after that. I go where the vibes take me. A lot of art is just going with the vibes. No hungry, it's time for a beaver. Why do you have the worst advice? One thing I wonder about the recommendation of one gram per body weight is if it accounts for fat. That's true. That's because I think because I don't know if anybody remembers. I like I, I hurt my shoulder. Um, what was that last Wednesday? Maybe a week ago. I don't. I think I just seriously pulled a muscle. It's fine. It's okay now. I don't want to say it's fine because it's not like a hundred percent. Um, but. It took a long time to heal. Not a long time, just longer than I would have liked. And like, I, I can't help but wonder if like, I didn't have enough protein in my diet for it to like, properly heal quickly. You know what I mean? Like to repair itself. Okay, so another tip. I normally don't use the same color shadows on skin as I do for every other part of the body, I normally use like a more pinker toned of the skin that whatever the skin is. Because if you use blues and stuff on skin, it normally makes them look really like kind of dead. However, Ronnie is already blue. So I might as well just use the blue. She can't look any more or less alive. She is literally a doll. A strain can take weeks. Healing takes longer you age, plus you gotta get good sleep. Well, if you're old, that pain will come back and get you. I like how you guys just assume I'm like 85. Very cool. But yeah, I don't know. Because I didn't like, I woke up the next day and it hurt like a, like a fuck, dude. It was so bad. It hurt so bad. And I don't remember actually hurting it at the gym. So I don't even know if I did hurt it at the gym. I just assume I did because I was at the gym and I was doing arm day and that's the only thing that makes sense. But I don't, I never got a pop. I never got a strain. Like I never got any kind of like tweak, nothing. I just woke up the next day and my shoulder felt like it was, it had dislocated almost. NSAIDs also make healing worse. I did not know that. Nobody has done a Ronnie I'm blue cover. Oh my god. Then did wrecked shoulder washing walls and the pain comes back years later. Great. I know the health secrets. Um, I have dislocated the shoulder before in the past, so I don't know if that's why it's kind of like terabed. <laughs> it was a long time ago though that I dislocated it like 
free Ragnarok, but I don't know if that's why. It just because like it's still not a hundred. Like if I like rotate my shoulder, like you know, you do like shoulder shrugs or shoulder rotations, you know, um, it pops like it cracks, and it, it didn't do that before. <laughs> it didn't do that before. And my neck is like um still really. St it's not as stiff as it was, but it's still pretty stiff. Look at this track. Oh no, give it back. There you go. Give it back. All right, this should also, ah, ah, ah. I did find it eventually. Yeah, I came back. So, but but yeah. So I don't know. If, I was like, I was starting to worry that I actually like dislocated it, like this this week, last week, whatever. Because I'm like, this just feels weird. It just doesn't feel like now that I, I was doing shoulder shrugs with it. Now just to be like, it pops, and now it does. It feels like it popped out again. Not like out out, but I just wish it wasn't my right arm. I wish it's my left arm. I'm okay with losing lefty, but I need righty. By the way, after 30 is old. Oh my god. That is that when you get your hag title? Is when you hit 30? Is that when hag? What is hag energy, by the way? Bleach said I didn't have hag energy. What, is, what the fuck is hag energy? Thirty is when you feel mora your mortality, bro. I've been feeling that for a lot longer than that. I got that deep seated trauma. You know what I'm saying? I've been worrying about that shit since I was like six. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Peg is like. An old woman, so it's like after you nap, smoking a lot of cigarettes. When the internal being feels morality, no things are bad. It's true. Valkyries aren't actually eternal, so. Like at some point, someone will make me so sad that I will in fact die. Someday, I'm sure. Someone will just disappoint me so much that I will cry myself to death. Or they will cut off my head. I don't know. Who knows? Who really knows? <laughs> Hello, Otter! I was to say Valkyrie like the foreigners. What does that mean? Fluffy, fluff, 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 fluff. Fluffy, fluffy, fluff, fluff. No, no, no. No, no, no. We do shadows. No, I certainly can't make you sad. I'm only ever supportive. Of my yes. Walkree. I, uh, I don't actually remember how it's pronounced in, like, Norse. Walkiria. It's been so long. Been in the States way too long to remember how to say it the right way. All right. Just doing some more shadows. This is kind of like, so this is both my least favorite and my most favorite part, I think, is adding the shadows. And it's my least favorite because it takes forever and it's not like super engaging. Like, like this isn't like super fun, happy, fun time, joy time, right? But it's also when things kind of start to pop and really like look neat. So it's, it's a difficult, it's a difficult thing to deal with. You know what I mean? Hold on, I'm gonna do a big stretch to strike it. My shoulder back where it needs to. I fucked it up. Why did I fuck it up? Why, Rick? Why? There we go. It popped back into place. 
So you think I actually dislocated it? Oh. Like you've seen her somewhere? Yeah, I don't know, dude's weird. So another key hint. Um, when I'm drawing, I also don't use like the shadow, the overall arching shadow colors for hair either. I use just a darker version of the hair. Um, however, again, Ronnie's hair is blue. So here we go. Um, I also can show you guys how I do hair, because I, I have changed how I do hair too. So but I'll just I'll just do some blocks right now. Why did I draw Ronnie with a huge dumpy? It's not a huge dumpy. She's got a skirt. Her dumpy's only like here. The dress adds volume. That's kind of a big dumpy. You don't like your dolls with a dumpy, Buddha? Alright, so basically when I do hair, um, I make the ends darker than the mid shafts. Cause like the, so like I'm gonna, Hers is a little different because she's wearing a hat, right? But I'm gonna I'm gonna add like highlights, probably like here, and then like maybe a little bit here, and like some like here, just for dimension. Um, if she wasn't wearing a hat, the highlights would be a little higher up, but she's got a hat on that's blocking a lot of light. Um, but yeah, so I always make the ends darker, and then obviously like the top of their head, where like the hair would come out of your head that is darker as well. So those are like normally my like places to hit, like basic places to hit with shading in here. Or is it a fancy stick? It's a good question. Uh, let's see, so. Then I just kind of do like zigzaggy sharp shapes with the hair. Again, we're not doing anything like too insane with this yet. We're, we're not getting, we're not getting into the insanity of rendering yet. We're just blocking in shapes. I mean, she looks like she has a big dumpy, but the game she has a rumple back dress. Yeah, she's very sacky shaped in the game. It's fan art, dude. Let me do my fan art. Judgmental. You're judgmental. I feel like they're like, okay, guys, we can't make like Ronnie like a sex thing and then. Everyone went wood. And they're like, shit, we made Ronnie a sex thing. They're like, shit, what have we done? Alright, so she got shading on her hands. How does that make Ronnie a sex thing? The internet is a weird place. Yeah, I don't I don't think that was the like the intention they had going in though, is what I mean. Like, she wasn't made to be sexy. Like, Merica was made to be sexy, right? Pop the boner. They did the same thing for Snake. Like, Metal Gear Solid Snake? What? Bip. I give spoilers, but Lamau. All right, we're gonna add some here. We'll add some on like the thingies here. Basically anywhere the light's not. So, um, what is it called? Not occult occlusion, what is it? Uh, uh, occlusion shading, occlusion, ambient occlusion. Um, so basically what I'm doing is called ambient occlusion right now, and well, a lot of this is. Um, not all of it. The ambient occlusion is like, um, not, but Ronnie has the alluring energy to her paired with the mystery and regal grace she exudes, yeah. Um, so ambient occlusion, if you start looking up art tutorials, you might hear them say that a lot. Um, and basically what that is, is it's, um, ambient light being removed from the situation. So um, a really good spot for ambient occlusion is right here. 
So because, um, because her arm is so close to the body here, the body's blocking the light onto the sleeve or like right here, you know? So it's any, it's things that are close to each other that block light would be ambient occlusion. So like right here, you know, or, or right here, you know, the sleeves close to the skin that's blocking the light. So that would be ambient occlusion. Um, so if you're like starting out you're like, I don't know where to start with these shadows, uh, that would be like the place to start would be like hit all the ambient occlusion spots. Cause at least then it kind of gives you, what did I do? I did something. Um, it gives you a place to start. Lore question, why forearm doll? Aha, uh -huh, I just deleted it. I don't know. Uh, I know why I don't know why she's in a doll. I'm not the lore guy. Save it, Buddha. Save that for tomorrow, okay? <laughs> we'll make Dev answer that tomorrow on stream. We'll make him do some work. Since I'm carrying him through the game. We'll make him do the lore work. I was going to answer it. Oh, fine. You can answer it now. Buddha will forget anyway. He doesn't pay attention. Okay. So I think I don't really like, I feel like I need shading here, but like, it's weird. Some people talking about the Elden Ring lore and it was not LL Cool J. No? I'm starting to like get a small grasp on it, just like watching a YouTube short here and there. <laughs> but it's a very, it's a very small grasp on it. Alright, so I'm also going to do like right here because It's near the center of the hat, and the hat should have a shading near the center because there's less light getting in, if that makes sense. All right. Da, 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 da. Like, there's no way anybody actually learns this stuff. Everyone cheats with the Lord. Well, I mean, obviously, they look it up. Granny's doll is a marionette, like those ones you run into with the speared swords and arrows in Rhea Lucaria. Oh. But, like, cuter. The doll pants started in Bloodborne. Oh no. No wait, I'm gonna put it here. Cause it's closer to this hair. So the other thing that shadows and highlights are great for is separating pieces from each other. <clears throat> so for example, I have this chunk of hair right here, right? And it's obviously the same color as this chunk of hair. So um, where I put that shadow is not the greatest. Oops. So I need to separate this, right? So the best thing to do would be to like, I can add like a shadow here. So I can be like beep, 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 and then fill this in and then erase you know, this part right here. See, and now like that visibly separates it from, then I can, you know, even go a step farther and like add, you know, a shadow here. So that visibly separates that front piece of hair from the back piece of hair. So it, it reads easier. Well, it makes, well, okay, so, like, if this is, so, if Ronnie's a marionette, like, those marionettes look nothing like Ronnie. I mean, it kind of explains the arms, but, yep, shadows, yeah, shadows give the illusion of depth. So, here's another spot right here where it's ambient occlusion, and it will do some separation. So, if I, I put, you know, more of a shadow here, it'll pop the spot out. But then I also am going to um, get rid of some of the shadow here. 
Because while there could very easily be shadow here, I just, I don't want to, I don't want it there. I just, I'm making the, I'm overriding physics. As an artist, sometimes it's okay to override physics, guys. I am the creator of my own world. Alright, so then like right here, there should probably be some kind of shadow. And then I'm just going to add some like fluff texture because it's supposed to be furry here. And that pops her boob away from the, the cloak. So um, there's got to be something here because her arm is blocking. And then there should definitely be something here. Oh, I love this song. Yes, my family created this doll, so it makes sense for her to use the design. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Ta-da! All right, so we have two options. Oh, so now this is probably even the point where I would probably, like, start messing with, like, how dark I want my shadows to be. Because, like, this is very intense, right? We don't want that. So I will, um... I'm going to, like, put it to, like, 50%, I think. <laughs> <coughs> oh, my God. Let me get some water. Okay. Yeah. Now, at this point, it depends on how I'm feeling. I will either do a second pass of shadows... Or I will do highlights. So what I think I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do a second pass of shadows. But I'm going to do it like this. Um, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to do a second pass. I'm going to make it slightly more blue and then darker. Um, and then I'm going to do this. So I want her backlit. So to have her backlit, I need to have her darker than the background. So I need to kind of fill in where she is. Okay, hold on a minute. So I'm just gonna select her with the lasso tool. And I'm going to fill her in. Boom. Fill. There you go. And now I'm going to put on multiply. Boom. And now she's darker! The marionette fall a lot, but they also stab a lot. I have to abandon the T for now. But I'm going to shall sustain me. Oh no. Alright, so we're gonna, then we're going to drop it down. Um, I'm gonna actually change the opa- uh, not the opacity, the saturation of that blue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go hue and saturation, and crank that saturation way down. And then, there. And now we have a Ronnie! Now we have a Ronnie that we can, uh, do a cool backlight on. So I'm gonna make my brush into an eraser, and I'm just gonna do a backlight type light situation here. Make her extra glowy. So obviously, like, she'll get some rim lighting, right? Because the backlight is behind her. And it'll kind of creep her around. Now, this is where people kind of get hung up with the backlight, right? They'll just do this part. They will just erase, or they will just highlight around, like, the like the edge of everything, right? And then call it good. That's not, that's not, that's not enough. You have to do more. There's more to do, right? My brains are wrinkling. I know, I haven't had, I don't know what's going on. Like, my, my neurons activated drawing Ronnie. I don't know what happened. I guess I never really thought about my process a lot until, like, this very second. Alright, so, right. Okay, so we've, we've, we have some kind of rim lighting, right? Now, this is not, this is not far enough. We're gonna go in. Because light 
wraps around stuff. So we're not going to just do this edge here. It wraps around. So we're going to pull it up her elbow a little bit. Light wraps around stuff. We're going to pull it down her sleeve a little bit. It's going to go around her wrist. Okay, maybe not quite that far. You know, it's going to go past her hair. We're going to bring it in. You know, this, this is going to catch some rim light right here. You know, something's going to go up. This might catch a little light. There might be some light caught here. You know, so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pull it a little bit more. You can't just leave it at just the edges. And it's okay if light touches shadows in this, in this instance. Makes me wonder if V is an art teacher. No, 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 no. I'm not cool enough to be an art teacher. All right, but. Um, yeah, so then, like, we may get some light moving here. Um, and then there's something called bounce light. Here, we're gonna, we're gonna, we got some wrinkles here. And again, this is, like, super rough draft. Like, we aren't close to being done. We're not, we're not rendering yet. We're just, we're mapping. V isn't dressed enough to be an art teacher. Um, so then we have bounce light, which is basically what bounce light is, is like light hits a, a surface and then bounces back and hits another surface. So light might hit this sleeve and bounce and kind of hit this sleeve. You know, there might be some here. Now bounce light is always, 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 well, maybe not always, always, but like 99% of the time it's a lot softer. Bounce light is soft. It's not something that's going to be super strong. So, like, you know, there might be some bounce light on her nose, for example. So we're going to add, you know, we're going to, and, like, maybe on, like, a lip. And maybe, like, on our hands. Now, this is one of those things where once you get used to drawing and, like, creating art and stuff, this is one of those places where you can start bending rules and kind of using it to your advantage. Um, because like, let's say, cause like, let's say I need more separation from the fingers, right? Or like right here, you know, um, maybe there's light kind of wrapping around here, right? And I just need some more definition, but I want to make it like subtle. You don't want to just like draw white there and call it a day, but you can make it subtle and then it kind of pulls the hand away from the background a bit more. Bounce it off things. Yeah. You know, so they kind of blend it into the nose and the lip and stuff. I'm gonna blend it in more here. You know, so it's 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 subtle, but we can we'll pull it back here, <clears throat> and you know, so this is like the piece is suddenly super way more moodier than it was before. Now we can do highlights. Um, I'm going to do highlights underneath this, like, overarching layer. So I'm going to turn that layer off. So what I do for, I do Add Glow in Clip Studio Paint for highlights. Um, Clip Studio Paint's Add Glow is different than Photoshop's Add. They're similar, but they're different. So draw the underside of her hat. I know, I've been eyeballing that. I'm not, I'm not excited. <laughs> um, so basically, I'm going to take, um blue like a light blue let me just draw with that quick um again one of those times where i'm gonna break a rule because like i said normally highlights are a warm color um but just we're kind of sticking with the monochromatic palette and it's moonlight and moonlight tends to be cool toned so we are going to stick with a blue um, and we're just gonna, her hat's obviously gonna be very light colored if we have like a, a light source coming down. Um, and this is where things kind of start really like separating from each other because um, while these aren't like super harsh shadows, right? Um, adding the highlights kind of makes them pop a bit more. So they seem like darker in comparison.
then uh, what I am using right now is the uh, airbrush tool. Um, I only ever really use the airbrush for highlights. And it's very controlled. Um, I'm not like a crazy fan of the airbrush tool. I, I don't use it for like coloring or anything. I just only ever use it for highlights. And it's like super like overall highlights. So like, you know, obviously like there'll probably be highlights on her arms here. Highlight on her leg and her hip because they're kind of popped out. Um, right here might have a highlight. Probably not too bad because of the hat. You know, so then you got that. These might have. And then if I start like coming in with like more tightly controlled, I will swap over to my, my hard painting brush. Or I will use the lasso tool. But normally, 9 times out of 10 when you're drawing, you're going to have way more shadows than you are highlights. At least in my experience. Um, so I'll use a hard painting brush and I'll just go in and I'll just scribble those in really fast. So like these would probably pick up some light. You know, obviously like right here would have some light. I'm not like the biggest fan of this wrinkle, so I'll probably render that out later. Um, this will catch some light because it's like part of the, the dress, the texture on the dress. We'll have some light. These will catch some light. Hips always need highlights, yes. Um, let's see, this will have some light. We'll add some highlights to the fingies here. And then I'll add some here. This is close to the cape, so I don't want to add the highlights like right next to the cape, even though this is technically the highest point, but the cape's going to be casting a shadow. So I don't want to add them too close to the cape. And then obviously like these wrinkles here will have highlights on them. Be Drew Ronnie's hair wild so she doesn't have to draw the shoulders. Yes, you've caught on. All right, and then she's got some highlights on her hands, maybe the top of her fingies, maybe right, uh, maybe right here, and then like right here. Okay. Um, and then the highlights for hair, I do in a weird way. I do hair weird. Um, I'm going to make a new layer for the hair. I'm going to do add glow again. I'm going to use the same color because her hair is blue. And then I do this. And then I fill. And then I do. Ziggy zaggy. Fill. Ziggy zaggy 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 zaggy. And then probably some like over here. Like I want this to be ziggy zaggy ziggy zaggy. Some ziggy zaggies over here, maybe just for just for a pop. All right. Now what I do is I use a painterly blender. So with the texture, and we go. Nope, that's too much. I don't totally blend them up. Okay, this part's not supposed. To, that's not even on here. Um, I don't totally like blend it out one hundred percent. Just just to kind of make a little bit more like uh, what's the word? Differentiate differentiation between the between the edges, so they're not all super hard edges. Some can be hard, but we want them not all hard, right? And then, um, hold on, we need a little bit more, a little something, something. We need a little something, something over here. Beep. All right. Paint really blender. See, so it kind of already looks like hair because we're using that paint really blender. Um, and then I'm gonna drop the opacity a bit because that's really effing blight. Right. Okay, so then what I do, and I only do this for the highlights, I'm going to copy that layer. So now there's two highlight layers. And now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to go cheeky 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 and delete the extra bit. So basically what's up is we have like a brighter part in the middle and a less bright part on the edges. I suppose I could just make a new layer and not copy and just not cheeky cheeky one way. I could cheeky cheeky the other way. That might be a little faster. Maybe, but I don't know. I like doing this because then I for sure got the same shape and they kind of kind of follow the same trends. So um, this one, I always turn the opacity like way down. And then once again, hit it with that painterly blender. And then again, you get a little bit more like variation in the highlight. So it's a little bit more, a little more, more interesting. This is a rendering thing that I'm doing right now. <laughs> But yeah, so now the hair looks super duper crazy rendered and nothing else does, but 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, so what we'll do, I'm gonna merge these two. So now that's just a hair highlight. Um, this is our highlights. And then this is, so we'll do secondary shadows next. So basically I'm just gonna take like a same-ish color. So I'm gonna color pick this, this color, this, this gray color. And then I'm just gonna make sure it looks fine. Multiply. Yeah, so that's, so we're looking for like a darker color. So basically this is gonna be like the more intense shadows that we're looking for. So for example, a good spot for that would be like right here. Cause this is where like the least amount of, oops, not that, not that curve. Um, this is where like a lot less light is gonna go. So we're gonna just plot that there. And again, we're working in layers. So this is mixing with the other multiply layer. This is mixing with the color underneath. This is mixing with the underpainting. You know, yeah, the curve's not quite right. Um, but again, I can use this now to pop that hair out from the background. Oh my gosh, let me do it this way. All right, we're gonna have an ad in five minutes. Dang, really? It's already been an hour? What the heck? All right, I'm just gonna... It's coming out so nice, yes! You know, so like this spot's another good spot. You know, like it's kind of the same color of their skin, so... But there's not gonna be a lot of light there, so we can kind of make it darker. You know, this is another great spot down here. I think my highlight kind of got a little crazy there. Nope, okay, that's just background color. So, you know, you can add more texture to stuff with this. And again, we're not worrying about lines. We're kind of trying to stay in lines. We're not worrying about like details or anything like that. Um, because when we render, that's when we'll do a lot of cleanup. Like the liner's gonna get painted over. The liner, the sketch is gonna get painted over. Um. Oop. Yeah, so that just kind of pops her away from it, you know, away from everything a little bit more. It's just another layer of like, of stuff. It's just another layer of separation. That's all art is, it's just separating layers. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm stepping in. You know, so we can do, we can do a loop here. I'm just gonna do this and then cut it out because it's easier. Um, if you use the selection key, learning the hotkeys is like, it makes, you use, bleh. if you're using the selection tool, uh, learning the hotkeys is like a game changer. Highly would recommend how the, the hotkeys for the hotkeys. So if you make a selection you want to add to it, you hold shift while you loop something else, it'll add to it. And then if you want to remove chunks, you hit alt, you hold alt and it'll remove chunks. So you can kind of shape it. It should already be assigned. Um, it should, should be. You know, so there's just little bits. Again, like, this isn't like overall shadows. This is gonna be your more detailed type shadows. And the reason why we're doing this now and not rendering is during the rendering stage is when we render, um, what's going on here? When we are rendering, we're gonna be color picking a lot. And these are the places we're gonna be color picking from. All my tablet buttons are weird. I don't know. Uh, I use my keyboard. Uh, I, unless you have like one of those tablet keypad things, uh, which you don't really need. They're nice to have. I have one. I just don't use it because it's a pain in the butt to connect to my PC. Um, but a keyboard is fine. You don't. Most 99% of digital artists have their keyboard right next to them. I now that being said, I do have these I do have these map to buttons on my tablet. I don't normally use them on my tablet though. Cause it's more comfortable to use my keyboard. 
Because my tablet has uh, one, two, three, I have eight keys, and then I have my wheel for changing brush sizes. But a lot of times I end up just using my keyboard. It depends. Depends how I'm feeling, I guess. But yeah, assign, if you have them and you want, you plan on using them, that would, yeah, assign those buttons. Put the spin wheels hotkeys, undo, and the zoom wheel. Oh, wow. I have mine set. It's set to zoom. I don't use it. The only thing I ever use it for is changing brush sizes. So if I have like a brush, that's why, that's how I can, like when I'm when I'm drawing and I'm like changing brush sizes super fast, it's because I'm using the zoom key or the, the wheel on my tablet. So I'm like, as I'm drawing, I'm like actively spinning it. This is a good spot right here because barely any lights gonna get in there. And then right here, there's gonna be barely any light. Oh, and pan. Having the pan button I can hold and scroll with pen is huge. Ow. Actually, now that I think about it, I think I use the keyboard more while I'm streaming because my mic boom is in the way um yeah because like right now i'm using so this is i'm using my hotkeys on my tablet um but here i'm using my keyboard uh but yeah my mic booms in the way when when i'm streaming so i think that's probably why i end up using the keyboard more it just kind of depends on what you got really I really like oh we got an ad starting like a minute here I want like I should probably end this stream but we're so close to like one of the really cool parts and I wanted to show you guys the blending so we'll probably get through the ad I'll finish this up during the ad and then I'll show you guys the blending bits and then probably after that then we'll we'll call it a night so we'll have to render on a different day are you guys glad I didn't play Elden Ring and instead did art you guys learned so much ah you learned so much All right, so I have like zero shading on like this, but that's because I wanted to kind of render that more. It was interesting. Thank you, thank you. Yay! Was it, was it cozy? Yes. Oh, what happened? I'm just throwing in some like uh, low lights here. Oh, maybe not quite that thick. I think the other one I did was a little thick boy, but because her hair is under the hat, so. So I kind of wanted to make sure it got like the proper, you know, dark. Constantly stressed, so I never get cozy. Oh, I was far more chilled than the rest of my day. Yay! I'm glad. I'm gonna drop some right like here. Drop some low lights right here, just to kind of again dimension. Going for the sixteenth dimension on this. And then, yeah, we can add some like right here. Oh, you know what? There probably should be some, some shading here just cause it's like, it's her arm. Yeah. And then I'll probably throw some like directly under her chin. Ow. 
Ah, I keep accidentally hitting control S. Okay, that's fine. And then we'll just like, I really wanna, I need more shading on her hand though. All right, so if we zoom out, we got some shading going on and then we'll drop a boom. A wa ba 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 boom. This is a problem because this is not actually round. Hold on a minute. Uh, which way is it gonna go? I gotta push this up. There you go. Oh, it's the background that looks like that. It's giving me that problem. There you go. That's better. I think. Hold on. I'm using the liquify tool right now. Uh, Clip Studio Paint recently got their liquify tool. So now we don't need Photoshop for liquify either. There's less and less reasons to have Photoshop is all I'm saying. Clip Studio Paint's adding so many things that I use Photoshop for. There. All right. That's fixed. That background was bugging me. Krita had liquify for forever. Krita's ass. Yes, I am on version 3 now. All right. So, the cool part. I'll show you guys some of the cool parts, the cool bits, the, the fun part. So, we'll start with... Um, the hair is done, so I'm just gonna say hair, so I know that's hair highlight. I don't keep clicking it. I don't really name my layers, um, unless I like absolutely have to. All right, so these are these are the highlight layers. So we'll turn this off because we don't need it right now. Um, highlight layers are gonna be like cheesy, easy peasy. Okay, so again, this is where the paint really blender comes in. Again, we're not doing like a whole lot of rendering, but. Um, we are going to blend it in so that we have like a nice base layer to, uh, to start with. Also, this is at a hundred percent. I don't want it a hundred percent. Hold on. Cause, okay. So this is a hundred percent and then this is like 60. <laughs> layer check. I still use Adobe for like layer adjustment stuff still though. Like... Like if I, normally what I do, um, if I'm like rendering a piece and I'm starting to feel like I'm getting stuck or I'm like kind of going around in circles and I don't really have like a, a plan, uh, I will, I will save it as a PNG and then I'll throw it in Photoshop and I'll mess with the curves and stuff. Um, they do have curves here, I believe, tone curve, um, Oh yeah, they they do have Clip Studio Paint has curves. I just Photoshop's are a little bit more beefy, if that makes sense. I really don't know how to explain it. Um, they are like their math is better. Does that make sense? So, but yeah, basically, so highlights are a little different because we want highlights to kind of um depending um blend in a bit more because like I kind of. And I think this might just be like a personal like style thing. I tend to just plop highlights wherever. So then like you tend to have to need more shading or blending, blending, not shading. Um, but this is where like, and we'll do this a lot more with rendering. Um, but this is where like the kind of the technique of stuff kind of comes in. Affinity photo. Never even heard of that. So right now we're just kind of getting base highlights, but um, it, you, you use it a lot more with the shadows, so I can show you guys when we hit up the shadows. So I'm just trying to get like a, again, a lot of it's just like baseline for the next step, if that makes sense. All right, I don't have any like harsh things just hanging out. Okay, so we're gonna go, oh, nope, I have one. Especially since, um, if you're like rendering something like armor or like something that's metal that's super shiny, it this sort of thing's gonna matter with highlights. Um, but if it's like a soft fabric that's not gonna really like reflect light directly, um, most of the time your highlights are gonna be more subtle, and you don't have to like have very sharp lines. But when you're shading, so we're gonna do we're gonna do this layer of shadows first. Um, and basically what happens is you need to be aware 
of where you're going to have a sharp line where your shadow ends and where you're going to have a soft line when your shadow ends. So um, let me find a good example. Normally like these folds are a really good example of that. So um, like here, and you have to really think about it. Like here, there's already a highlight, which means it's going to be probably be a gradient. So like you want to have like a softer blend here, right? But this is where like the shirt's kind of folding. Like this fabric is probably higher than this point, right? So while you still don't want a super sharp line, it would be a sharper line than this one. So like for example here, this would be this part right here would probably be a sharper line than the spot right here because of how close folds. And this is something that um, I used to get, like I hyper fixated in collage um, about fabric folds. So I'm, I'm a little bit more like I can do a lot of this stuff without reference because I got weird with it. Um, <laughs> I have almost an entire sketchbook of me just like drawing fabric folds. Like I'm kind of ridiculous. Actually, what I should do is I should kind of blend these shadows in just a little bit because they're very distracting. So I'm just going to do that real fast. Um, yeah, but like I always encourage people to um, pull up references of fabric folds in different lighting. Um, you, use references, guys. Always use references. If people say that like pros don't use references, they're lying through their fucking teeth. They are lying to you. They are either too stupid to know better or they're trying to make you feel bad. Either way... Don't listen to them. They are lying. Use references. Um, I've, I've not seen one professional artist ever that's been working in the industry for a long time say that they don't use references. So use, use them references. And there's tons of like, um, oops, there's tons of stuff out there too where it's like, like there's several websites out there that are just, Full of lighting references like they pull um like really dramatic light lighting references from like movies and stuff and like softer ones from like like that would be like good for like a family photo and things like that so look look it up it's on google do some research use references gotta use the lighting yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so Use any time you're drawing, you're like, I'm not sure how this is supposed to look. Just use a reference. Nobody has everything memorized. Like I said, I, I have almost an entire sketchbook full. Like, I used to just, like, sit at home when I couldn't afford internet. <laughs> and just, like, I had, I remember I put, like, a sheet. I pinned a sheet to the drywall. And I just draped it in different ways. And I, and I drew that. Like over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. So like, yeah. <laughs> and I still look up references for lighting. Like uh, the commission I did for Robo. I had to look up a lighting reference for that because I, I'm not used to, I wasn't used to having like a super dramatic lighting situation like that. That was like, like the reds and stuff. So, you know. Use references. I cannot beat it into your head enough. Use the use the damn references. Okay, I'm just trying to blend these out a little bit because they're really distracting me. Okay. Um Dang, I didn't think I was gonna like hyper fixate on this art like I am today. I go really fast, yeah. I just wanted to show you guys cool blending. Ooh All right. 
I don't know. There's just something about blending that is just so satisfying. Like when you actually like start blending out the shadows and stuff the way the way everything like looks and like kind of blends together and stuff. Oh, oh, it's delicious. Especially with the painterly blender. My most favorite, my treasure. My baby, my baby painterly blender. This is almost acting like a secondary underpainting, which is kind of funny. Which is neat. Well, that was weird. Alright, I think I've kind of blended a lot of it out. There you go. Yeah. See, like, even that, even that looks great. Okay. Then we're going to turn this back on. Nope, that's this one. Ow, shoulder. All right, yeah, so we'll just do we'll just do some quick blending and then we'll call it a night, I think. Um I would oops, I would like to raid somebody maybe. I can't stay long. I I kind of hate raiding and diving, but I haven't raided anybody in a long time. So, and my thing piece not working. So, if anyone has any recommendations, I will look into it for a raid cuz my thing is not working right now. Yeah, so like, like for example, like this would probably be a sharper line than like this because the light's going to hit the top of our boobage and then stop. But, um, then it's going to, as like the curve comes back, it'll, it'll fade out a bit more. But like this will be like a harder line because like the actual fold of the fabric is there. It's all about layers. We're layering. I can't wait to show you guys the new trick I learned about the terminal. The terminal line. Terminal line? The terminal? Yeah, it is terminal. I finally figured out how that worked. Are you looking to ra raid into more art stuff? Yeah, that's fine. I like to raid into like people that are doing the same stuff I'm doing at the time. If I can. Oh yeah, that's skin. So we're gonna we're gonna again we use a different blender for skin. We want it to be smooth. So just gonna I know I was gonna talk through all the shading and like why why I'm making some like harsher lines and why I'm making some like a lot softer, but I'm just I'm I'm the I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Plague Baby is doing art. All right, let me pull them out quick. Twitch, Twitch, come on. Plague Baby. Oh no. It's blocked out on my screen. Oh, they have like two people. Oh, okay. Arts with Glow Succubus. Oh, that's neat. She has like someone else streaming a game at the same time. That's actually pretty cool. <gasps> and there's Pickle on the screen. Okay, we can raid them. So let me finish what I'm doing and then we can raid her. I just want to finish my art. Yee. Told you, fun surprise. It's Pickle, it's Pimkle. We're doing a collab on Thursday, very excited. We have uh, Pickle and me, and then we're, Dev is gonna be there, that guy, and we are uh, gonna be playing with Nex, who is screen name is the Goblicorn. Um, we played Helldivers with him before. So we'll be playing Lethal Company 
This is the first time I've ever played Lethal Company where it hasn't been like the large mod or whatever. So like I'm I'm interested to see how like the actual game works without 600 people in it because I've never actually experienced that before. So it will be it will be uh, an experience, a new experience for me. All right, so just kind of blend, 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 blend. Again, like hair, I don't try to like totally blend out the edges. We kind of want to keep those sharp edges a little bit because again, it adds some detail so your brain can register that hair. Even though this hair is like drawn in a big blob, it's still piecey and there's bits of it. Oh my god, the line are so messy though. That's okay. Alright, All right. So I think we'll call it here. And we'll call it a day. Oh, I'm gonna stretch my shoulder. Ah, uh, okay. I'm gonna save it. And um tomorrow I am streaming as well at the same time. Um we will be streaming, I'll be playing Elden Ring with Dev. So um if you have more lore questions, you can ask that guy, Buddha. Um, maybe we'll see Ronnie again, or maybe we'll, well, maybe we'll go hunt, hunt down Moog. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know what the plan is. And then Thursday is the Lethal Company collab. So games for the rest of the week, but I'm happy. I am happy we stuck with the art. We got some art done because I'm, I'm, it's looking good. I'm very happy with it so far. So I was actually able to sit down and participate for once. Yeah, I'm glad to have you here. So thank you guys so much for coming. Let's set up the raid real fast. The plans hit. Raid channel. Raid channel. Uh, play. Oh, let me let me spell. Hopefully I raid the right person. Not like that one time I raided into an offline place accidentally. Yes, it is the right person. All right. So thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you for raiding. Have a wonderful night, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.